This group is on a mission. They all have careers in science, technology, engineering or maths, and they all enjoy what they are doing. Today, they are hoping to inspire a group of year eights. And this is the group of students at Collingwood College in Camberley. At the moment, they've got some preconceived ideas about people working in STEM professions. Some people think they imagine pictures of, like, a sci if they thought of a scientist, they'd imagine someone with crazy grey hair and a big lab white, white lab coat. They think it's for boffins. In English, you learn to be, like, maybe you could be a writer, and mm -hmm. then in drama you could be an actor, but science, you don't really know much what you can be through science and math. Head of Careers Lorette Parker has problems getting her students interested in STEM. Is there anyone here that thinks they might like to enter into a STEM-related career? Nobody. Yeah. Today's visitors have a hard task on their hands. They are a group of professionals from engineers, scientists and project managers. They all come from industries local to the school. Before meeting the visitors, the students had 30 minutes to prepare their questions. Each group is going to meet three visitors for 20 minutes. Some of the questions are straightforward. We should say to them, have you always wanted to work with STEM? Yeah, and like also how many positive things they've taken in their career and how many negative. Other questions are more philosophical. If they imagined their um, career as a book, what would be the hardest page they have ever turned? I'm really excited about the day, but also quite nervous because we've got a number of employers giving up a whole day of their time to come and um, see our students today. And I'm just hoping that the students will be able to kind of ask the right, right questions and they won't feel too nervous about speaking to the employers and that actually they will gain something from the experience. And now for the big moment. Ben picks up the first visitor for his group. Yasmin, can you come through, please? Yasmin works for a water and environmental engineering company. Um, hi, I'm Ben. I'm Farai. And I'm Shannon. I'm Yasmin. OK. Um, so, like, was it kind of scary coming in? Because I know. What, here? Yeah. Yeah, a bit, but... It's fine. You guys are, you look like you're going to treat me well. Yeah. <laughs> in your job, are there any like highs and lows of it? Like happy and sad moments? Definitely, there are. But I've only been in my job for, I've not been that long because I just graduated um, from university, so I've only been there for two months. So I think the lows are definitely feeling like you don't know anything. Like that happens all the time. Um, and the highs are when I learn something and I realise that I can do it. Because a lot of the time you feel like you can't do it, but um, yeah, it's good when you find out that you can. When you were younger, did you ever think, like, I'm going to be an engineer? Or did you just think, or did you think I'm going to be a singer or an actress? <laughs> uh, I definitely didn't think I was going to be an engineer. I thought I was going to be lots of things. I thought I might be an author, an artist. I thought I might, I don't know, lots and lots of different things. I mean, it's, it's only natural when you're young to think that things to think oh I want to be this or I want to be that so what did they like about meeting Yasmin she was really young so we could kind of relate because like it because we're like 12 and 13 so and then she's got she's already done her GCSEs and her exams so she could share a bit of knowledge with us about that as well and university long way off but got to think about it sometime it sounds really good and um, you get to like go to other countries and um, she said she get to meet new people so and it was really fun. Hi, it's Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, are there um, positive and negative points to your job? Um, no, I, I enjoy, enjoy it so well. I don't find anything negative about it. Um, there's so much to do that I don't worry about things like that. It's not that stressful in the sense that you have to uh, keep working like mad away at it. You, you have sort of freedom to do it sort of leisurely, well, flexible and start when you want and finish when you want. So I like that bit. <laughs> in fact, I don't start till 10 o'clock. Don't say that. <laughs> Pravin likes his job so much that he has brought in pictures of all the places where he has been and all of the instruments he has built. 
So when I first started in Cambridge, I developed an electron microscope. This is a, a, a machine which allows you to look at very tiny little things. And that was the first thing I did back in 1982. So it was a long time ago, basically. It looks complicated, but actually it is. It's, it's, a, it's a television tube, but uh, the inside out, if you like. Uh, and on the outside, it's metal instead of glass. It does sound really good. But he said it looks more difficult than it actually is. He's been all the way around the world and he's been making stuff that is probably used today. It was interesting, more interesting than we thought it was going to be. Well, he said when we're older, we should work for him. <laughs> the first round of interviews is over. The students are surprised how interesting STEM jobs can be and the visitors seem to be more than willing to talk about it. I was actually really surprised how easy it was um, to get employers involved. I mean, I, I contacted a couple of companies myself and they were more than keen. And actually, you tend to find, and I don't think people realise, that most companies do have um, time allocated towards helping the community and helping schools. So it really wasn't actually a problem getting employers involved at all. The teacher is using a technique called the visitor experience, which gets the pupils actively involved in planning and hosting. The other focus of the visitor experience is to get as much information as possible by asking the right questions. What's your daily routine? Did you have anybody that inspired you? What was your dream job when you were younger? What was your favourite subject when you were at school? Is there any parts of your job that you don't like? <laughs> How many careers did you have before this one? What subjects did you do at school for your GCSE? I think the worst was what was the worst part of your job? and whether I ought to be saying on camera what the worst part of my job actually is, but um, they, they did send me a few curveballs. Um, uh, was there any luck involved in uh, my career, uh, or had it all been by design? And that was quite a difficult question to answer, because I had to think back over quite a number of years, and, uh, how I'd progressed, whether any of it was, uh, was pure luck, or whether uh, there had always been some inkling of where I was going. I think that the visitor experience is fantastic because it's actually um, it's about engaging the students. So in line with the new secondary curriculum, it means that they actually get to learn themselves. They're active learners um, and they're learning personal learning and thinking skills. They're also gaining teamwork skills, IT skills. They're presenting to the class. And I just think that when you get the students involved in something and give them responsibility, it really, really has an impact on them much more than if you're kind of just talking to them. The students are fascinated by the variety within some of the careers, like well, Jeremy's. Yes, they, they interviewed a lot of people. How did you get started I guess, doing your job? Oh gosh, what, doing my current job? Yeah. Mm, well, it's, it's quite a long time, as you can think. I suppose just by starting off as an engineer, then going into other things and becoming skilled in other areas. And then in the end, when being a consultant, I just took a decision that I've had enough time in big companies and I wanted to work for myself now. Are you proud that you made that decision or did you, do you regret it now? I'm proud of it. It's a good decision to have come to. For Jeremy, days like today are essential. He started as an engineer. Now he runs his own consultancy company. He wants the students to see that there are many ways for a career to progress. What they're looking at very often is that they're going to get into a career and they're going to be in it for all their lives and they're going to have to do exact exams and they're not going to have choices. And what I was trying to point out is that I've had such a random career, but it all started off with being a technologist. So therefore, actually, it gives you a lot more choices. But I think there is a worry in their minds that they end up just being on a single road. And I think that, you know, it's a misconception. If your career was um, a story like a book on your life and your job, um, what would be the hardest page you've ever turned? <laughs> Hardest page. Uh, I think jumping into that first job, you know, it's, it's a big commitment and you know, when you, it's my first job, I wanted to make sure it's a really, one that I really enjoyed. With Chris, the normal questions last for about five minutes. Then he takes out his phones. This one is actually made out of solid gold. Um, and this one goes, we sell this for maybe 10 to 20,000 pounds. We had to make this one really strong, so we made it out of titanium. Uh, I don't know if you know that, it's the metal that they sometimes use in jet fighters and aeroplanes and things. And it's so strong that you can actually drive a car over some of these phones. When you think of a scientist, you probably think, you know, um, 
boring, always like talks like really big words that you won't even understand, but it was really nice to talk to him. Like. They give him 20k phones and then he gets to smash them at home with his like brother. Chris has clearly made a big impression on many students. While preparing their final presentation, they are still fascinated by his career and would even consider it for themselves. Well, I quite like Chris's because like, he was making and um, dealing with all those fights. I wanted to be like a professional cook on TV, but it might change because um, I, I quite like fiddling with phones and that and finding things out about them. And I also like um, the job our second visitor uh, was doing, was designing mobile phones and um, Bluetooth headsets. Someone's put cool next to my name, I think, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Yeah, we've got cool products, uh, and that's quite nice to see. So that's, that's what engineers do as well. They do do good stuff. But it's not only Chris. All the visitors had an incredible impact on the opinion of the students. Before I wanted to be like a chef or a baker or something, now, yeah, I think I might change that. So, say something in engineering, that sounds fun. I've become more interested in engineering and like if I had to choose a job out of a STEM subject I'd pick engineering like cars and stuff. I didn't think that science was like to do with loads of different things like making circuit boards and things. Yeah, I didn't actually think there was many as many jobs as you can do related to STEM that there actually are. Just with those four subjects there are loads of things that you can go on to do. The day ends with a presentation by the students. It enables all the students to get an overview of all the visitors, not just the ones they interviewed. Pravin's job is electronics engineer. He works for the NPL. Pos the positive parts are that you can do lots of different projects in flexible hours, well paid and there are lots of social activities. Chris, job is luxury fun. Positive things are cool company and relaxed engineering. Negative things sometimes a little bit repetitive. The presentation also enables the teacher to see what the children have learned from the experience. We have learnt that our stereotypes are wrong and girls can do engineering too. Science and engineering jobs are much more fun and interesting than we thought. There are lots more jobs than we thought there were in STEM. Some can be quite highly paid jobs and less difficult than we thought. Just one question left. So now, would any of you, do you think, be interested in anything related to STEM? Put your hands up if you think yes. OK, brilliant. I was really surprised, actually, how much the students learnt from the day and how, how much we managed to turn their, their opinions around. And also, the sorts of things that they were coming up with were really, really adults, some of the questions they asked, and I, I was a bit worried with their age whether they actually they would be able to cope with this sort of activity, but they were brilliant.